am reporting from my backyard. I'm calling it Patio Productions for today's lesson. I just kind of needed to get out of the house, and uh, so I decided to do the lesson in the backyard. Um, today, we are actually starting Chapter 13, so it's our new unit. Um, the unit is going to be on sequences and then series at the very, very end, and so that's going to be our lesson for today. So as I'm switching to doing the PowerPoint, I want to remind you of a couple of things, okay? So I want to remind you that because this is a video lesson, and you get to, right, you get to um, pause this video at any time that you want to, okay? So you can pause, you can do whatever you want, it's all good. And so let's go ahead and get this PowerPoint up and running and let's do this, okay? So our topic today is about sequences. So really, um, you're gonna go ahead and take some notes, it's gonna be lovely. Um, and then again, if, I, if you feel like I'm going too fast or you want to like pause the video to try to answer the question yourself and then see if we get the right answer, whatever you guys wanna do is totally fine. Okay, so um, let's get this going here. Let's do this. Charge! Let's do the lesson. Okay, so here's what a sequence is. A sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers or a subset of the positive integers that consists of the integers 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 n. That does not make any sense, right? So I still want you to write it down, though, because it's officially what a sequence is. But maybe just um, maybe in your notes, like for your own self, go ahead and write yourself a note that says um, a sequence is actually just a list of numbers that has a pattern to it. OK, so it's a list of numbers that has a pattern to it. Um, this little um, English uh, uh, English definition is much easier to understand. OK, so I feel like definitely you're going to want to write that down, right? You're just going to write down. Um, that a sequence is a list of numbers and it has a uh, pattern to it. Um, when you write your list of numbers, you're going to put like a number like two and then you're going to put a comma and then you're going to put the next number like a four and then you're going to put a comma and then maybe it's an eight and then you put a comma. OK, so that's what happens when we do our um, sequences. It's a list of numbers. You separate them with commas and then you're golden. OK, there's literally all kinds, all kinds of sequences. OK, this is a sequence right here. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> you know, I had to finish it with that. I mean, seriously, years of A-Y-S-O. OK, so two, four, six, eight is definitely a, a sequence. Um, this is a sequence. One, one third, one ninth, one twenty seventh. Um, on the first sequence, um, you will notice that literally from term to term, we are just adding two and then we add added two, et cetera, et cetera. And this one, it looks like we're like dividing by three, or maybe a better way to say that would be multiplying by one third. So one times one is one third. Uh, one third times one third is one ninth, et cetera, et cetera. Another example of a sequence is this one. It's one and then one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. Looks like the pattern on this one is the numerators are always one. And then the bottom is just the denominators increasing by one. Sounds great. Um, this is actually actually a sequence also it goes it is actually a really famous sequence i don't know if you've experienced this in your math life before but it goes one comma one comma two three five eight thirteen twenty one this is actually called the fibonacci sequence you actually take like a, a term and you add the two previous terms like for instance if you look at three right here three is two plus one and then when you look at five five is three plus two and then eight is five plus three. So you can kind of see that this, um, it totally has a pattern. Um, it's not an instantly recognizable pattern, but it's still a pattern, okay? So and then there's two types of sequences. Sequences can be finite, meaning that they're uh, just a particular number of terms. And so um, as an example, um, this guy right here, the two, four, six, eight guy, this guy is a finite sequence. This guy also right here with the one, uh, one, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. This guy's also finite, okay? Um, as opposed to an infinite sequence, right? So what makes an infinite sequence be an infinite sequence is because it goes uh, dot, uh, comma, dot, dot, dot at the end. So this dot, dot, dot on the second example and fourth example are, are saying that it's going to go on forever. So we call those an infinite, an infinite sequence. OK, so just today's lesson, I'm just going to back up for a second. Today's lesson is literally just an introduction to sequences. We're going to talk about more specific kinds um, 
in the future lessons, but right now, today, we're just going to go, um, here is uh, examples. Um, we're going to talk about notation. We are super not going to be freaked out by, by notation. It's going to be quite lovely, okay? So example number one says, find the first five terms of this sequence. It's defined by this. So f of n is apparently, where's my little marker guy? Oh, it's way up there. Okay, so f of n is 2n plus 3. So whatever term number we're on, we're going to plug that into the n value. So like first term, plug in 1. Second term, plug in two, and then we're just going to write five of the terms, okay? So we're going to write the first five terms. So right, technically, I'm supposed to write f of one. So I plugged in one for the n value, and so two times one is two, two plus three is five, okay? The second term, I would go uh, plug in two for n. So two times two is four, four plus three is seven. I would plug in three, two times three is six, six plus three is nine, the fourth term, two times four is eight, eight plus three is 11. And last but not least, two times five is 10, 10 plus three is 13. So these are the first five terms, okay? So if I were to write them out, I would go five comma seven comma nine comma 11 comma 13 comma dot, 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 because I'm assuming that it is gonna go on forever because of this word right here that says infinite, okay? So it just said, write the first five terms, but we know it's infinite, so it goes comma dot, dot, dot. Okay, these guys right here are called terms. Of course they are, right? That makes perfect sense. Okay, um, we can also use A sub N to denote a specific term. Okay, so A sub N is writing it like in general. This would be like the general term, A sub N. But if you wanted a specific term like A sub 2, that means it's the second term. Right here, A sub 10 is the 10th term. And I'm saying sub as in like subscript. So it's like A S U B and then 10, A sub 10. Sorry if I say that really fast. You know, I'm a fast talker, right? I know. <laughs> Mrs. Vox, she's so fast. Sorry, sometimes it gets a little scrambly. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, the general term, just like I said, is A sub N and it's the nth term, right? And so it's just a general term and we call it the nth term. Okay. Um, the formula that we use is the rule of the sequence. It's just how we define the sequence. Okay. So this guy right here, example number two says, find the 19th term. Okay. So we're going to be looking for the 19th term. So the 19th term and given by this rule. So if we want B sub 19, right? B sub 19, the 19th term, we're going to plug in 19 every time we see an N. So three to the 19th, take away one. If you put that in your calculator, this is a really big number. It's, um, one and then comma 162, comma 261, comma 466. So that is like a really, 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 really big number. But isn't that super cool, right? <laughs> that you could just plug in the plug in the number and just jam. Okay. Um, so a rule like we have just experienced in example number two is called an explicit formula. Okay. An explicit formula means that you are um, can find any term of the sequence just by plugging in the correct number. Okay. So it gives the nth term as a function of n. So just like we did in example number two, we plugged in 19 every time we saw an n and then poof, we got the number that was the 19th term. Okay. We didn't have to build the whole sequence to get the 19th term. It just was able to be appeared. Okay, so then for example, number three, it says find an explicit formula. So uh, honestly, in your homework, guys, you're just going to have to think, right? And, and brainstorm and think to myself, like, how can I make uh, like the pattern? So this guy goes 10, 20, 30, 40. If I'm thinking about this pattern, like, let me think, let me think. It looks like whatever the term number is, you're just multiplying it times 10. So the fourth term is four times 10. The second term was two times 10. So basically my rule for this one is just going to be 10N. That would be my rule, my explicit formula for this lovely sequence. Okay, another example, okay, is two third, uh, two ninths, two twenty sevenths, two eighty first, comma, dot, dot, dot. Okay, it looks like the top, this is going to be a fraction, and it looks like the top number is always two. Every single one of these guys is a two. So for um, my rule, for my explicit formula, I'll just put a two on top. But then let's look at the pattern on the bottom, right? So it goes three, then nine, then 27, then 81. And I think that, that sometimes it's helpful to write which term it is. So this is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term, et cetera, okay? And so we're going to say to ourselves, oh, it's just three to the first power, um, three to the second power, three to the third power. And so my rule for this one is going to be two over three 
to the n. This is my explicit formula. Okay, another way to give a rule for a sequence is to use a recursive formula, okay? Recursive formulas, I think, are a little bit more cumbersome. There's a little bit more notation to them. However, some sequences you can only write with a recursive formula. So explicit's definitely like cleaner, right? Like smoother, but definitely like recursive has more options to it, okay? So a uh, recursive formula will give an initial term. So it's going to say like, oh, the first term is, and it'll say a sub one equals blank, or maybe the first two terms. And then it defines your terms using a preceding term. For instance, we may say something like, okay, the first term is one, and to get the next term, you add two. And to get the next term, you add two to the previous term, okay? And so there's some notation that has an A. I'm going to see if I can write this down. There's going to be like A and then sub N and then minus one. And so this is going to be like uh, no, uh, denoting that this is like uh, uh, referring to the previous term. Okay, so a classic example of a, a guy that can only be re uh, defined with a recursive uh, sequence is the Fibonacci sequence that we did in the beginning of notes. And so this one actually has to identify the first two terms. So it says a sub one is one, a sub two is one, and then it says the nth term a sub n is the a sub n minus one term plus the a sub n minus two. So it's the uh, the previous term plus the one before that, and we add them together, okay? And then there's like a little comma, and it says n is greater than two. This means starting with the terms that are um, after the second term. So starting with the third term, then we get to uh, uh, do it, uh, the, the sequence like this, add the two previous terms. Okay, so example number four says find the next four terms in the sequence given by the recursive formula. So this is just saying that the first term is three. And then what are we going to do to find the next term? You're going to go two times the previous term, whatever it is, and then you're going to subtract one. So that's what we're going to go. Two times the previous term and then subtract one. Super fun, super exciting. And remember, N minus one stands for, I'm now just going to start with the second term, okay? So the first term was a three. What's the next term? I take two times three, which is six, and subtract one and get five. The next term would be two times five, which is 10, and then subtract one, which is nine. Then we're gonna go two times nine, which is 18. And then 18 subtract one is 17. Two times 17 is 34. 34 minus one is 33. And those are the next four terms. Quite lovely. Guys, it's starting to sprinkle outside. I may have to change locations. I'm gonna see if I can brave it out. I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> It's going to be fine. Adventures on the patio, right? So fun. Okay. So a sequence can be defined by either formula, sometimes recursive or explicit. And so this is example number five. It says find an explicit formula for the sequence defined recursively. So I think what I'm going to do is I should write out a couple of terms. Okay. It says that the first term is a uh, seven. And then I'm going to take the previous term and add three. That's what it says. So I'm going to write seven. And then I'm going to add three to that and get 10. I'm going to add three to that and get 13. Add three to that and get 16, et cetera, then 19, et cetera, okay? So then how in the world did I come up with this uh, guy right here? It just looks like you're going up by three each time, okay? And so up by three, so I'm going to have like multiples of three, which is where the three N came from. And then I had to think to myself, if I plug in one for three, what would be like what I need to start with? And it's a four. So uh, just like double check a couple of terms. That first term right there is uh, three times one is three plus four is seven. Check out the fourth term. So the fourth term is 16. Three times four is 12. 12 plus four is uh, 16. So it totally works. Okay. Um, if you're given enough terms, you can also discover a recursive formula. So you can kind of like work it the other way. So fun. So exciting. And so this is a cute little word problem. It says, uh, Mrs. Fox, that's me, that's me. I know, so fun. Mm -hmm. Curtsy, curtsy, curtsy. Has decided to ease into saving her tutoring money. 
Um, the first week she's going to set aside, she, I, I'm going to set aside $1. And then the second week I'm going to do $2 and then I'm going to do $4, etc. And so here is my, um, my sequence. It goes one, then two, then four, then seven, then 11, then 16, then 22. So if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, what is happening? Sometimes I like to see what's going on between the terms. So it looks like there's not any multiplying going on because if it was, it would be one, two, four, eight, 16. So that's not multiplying by two. Um, are they doing like a Fibonacci thing? I don't think so. I think what it looks like is from one to two, I added one. But then from two to four, I added two. This is really hard to write. Four to three, uh, excuse me, four to seven, I added three. Sorry, scrambled up my brain there. Um, seven to 11, I added four. Oh, are you guys seeing the pattern? Um, 11 to 16, I added five, etc. So it looks like that whatever term I'm on, so like if I'm right here, let's take uh, where my righty guy go. If we're on seven right here, this is the fourth term. So I took the previous term and then I added one less than the term that I'm on. Okay, so let me see if I can like put that in English. Okay, so I said all of those words. And so I think this is what's happening. My first term is a one. So we write a sub one equals one. And then recursively, the nth term is to take the previous term. So a sub n minus one, and then add whatever term number I'm on subtract one. Okay, and then starting with n is greater than one. So hopefully all of those English words translated themselves into the formula and it makes sense. That's it. I did it. And it didn't actually rain that hard. I know. It's kind of funny out here. It's a little bit sprinkly. I'm going to have to wipe down my laptop a little bit. But this will be your homework assignment. Okay. Let me get out of here and get back to me. And um, ladies and gents, that's what we're doing. Okay. So um, again, if... Um, things were a little bit too fast, you just go ahead and you pause the video. Um, again, we're going to get back into the routine of taking a picture of your homework, uploading it to Google Classroom. Um, some of us have um, forgotten to do that. Oops, a daisy. So try to get on that. If you're having trouble, will you please reach out to me? I can walk you through some steps. We can chat on the phone. We can do what we need to do. Okay. So that's it, guys. I hope you had a great um, lesson and I got to get out of here for it. <laughs> before it starts raining a little bit more. Bye. See you later. See ya.